diagnosis. Uh, this is this was my uh, uh, here I finish. I thank you very much for your attention, and I also would like to thank you once again for inviting me in your congress. Thank you very much, Professor Grigoriadis, for your perfect lecture. There are no questions. Уважаеми колеги, продължаваме с следващата лекция, която е на професор Антоначи за гороболие, причинено от злоупотреба с медикаменти и европейския гайдлайн. We go to the next lecture, Professor Antonacci, Medication Overuse Headache, the European Guideline. Professor Antonacci, hello. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for inviting me to this uh, interesting congress. I had already one uh, talk uh, on this topic uh, yesterday. I would like to thank you the colleagues that are listening and the chairman of this uh, section. My duty much. today, now I have first time to share my slides. Uh, should be this one. Is it okay like this? Can you see the slides? Yes, of course. Very good. And now I move a little bit all these things. Okay, uh, so my duty today is to uh, speak about uh, the medication of a user headache. Uh, we had the chance to say that uh, this is a problem affecting uh, almost one to three percent of the general population. Um, this is my first time that I speak about the European guidelines uh, after the publication of, of uh, a paper. I think I should move uh, the, the screen. Okay. Oh. Like here. Uh, it's the first time that I speak about uh, this topic after the publication. It was a, a long work that we started uh, almost two and a half years before with uh, Chris Diener and we have joined the consensus of different uh, colleagues uh, around uh, Europe. This is uh, the the consensus of the European Academy of uh, uh, Neurology. And uh, we all know that the over medication overuse headache uh, shares some criteria. It's a headache that occurs uh, 15 days per month or more in a patient with uh, a pre-existing headache. And it uh, imply the use, uh, I may say the overuse uh, of more for more than three months uh, of one or more drugs uh, that are taken as a symptomatic uh, medication for headache. And of course you had to rule out the other possibility of different uh, pathologies connected to this. We have uh, uh, different uh, subtypes uh, of uh, uh, medication overuse headache. And uh, we have a group uh, where you have to have uh, for the criteria the intake of more than 10 days per month of the medication. And this implies uh, uh, gotamine, uh, triptan, opioid, uh, combination analgesics, uh, a different class of medication, sometimes the drugs that are not specified by the patients. Uh, or you may have the intake of more than 15 days per month of non-opioid medication like paracetamol, no steroid analgetic drugs, and so on. Um, the problem is always with this uh, medication overuse, uh, is, uh, is before the chicken or is before the egg? This is the big dilemma because uh, we know that the migraine gets worse and the patient uh, takes more uh, medication. And if the patient takes more medication, the migraine gets worse. So we don't know if uh, uh, it is exactly the chicken or the eggs that uh, uh, turns around this uh, difficult and uh, um, expensive uh, pathology. There are uh, several factors uh, that are associated with the, uh, the acute medication overuse. If we see the 
the drug that are most used uh, this is a recent work uh, we see that uh, in green uh, we have a patient that are not uh, uh, overusing medication and uh, in violet the patients uh, with uh, medication overuse in this case uh, uh, in both cases we have uh, uh, a, a great number of uh, uh, non-steroidal analgesic drugs. Then it comes uh, triptans uh, and you see the opiates uh, uh, are coming more and more, especially in the group of uh, uh, patients overusing uh, medication. So this is a really a big problem. Uh, probably this was uh, uh, something that is uh, a new trend uh, that was started in the States and now it is expanding in uh, Euro Europe to use uh, opioids uh, in uh, uh, headache. And now the, uh, the European guideline. We know that uh, usually the guidelines are made with, uh, uh, according to some questions uh, uh, that uh, follow the PICO rules, the population uh, uh, intervention, control and outcome. The questions that uh, we uh, have been uh, uh, set up uh, for our work are, uh, approx are, are seven. Uh, the first one is the information uh, and education effective uh, to prevent uh, medication overuse headache in those patients that are at risk of developing medication overuse. And the second one is uh, uh, if uh, pharmacological uh, uh, preventive therapy is effective uh, before developing the MOH in patients that are at risk. And then the third one, if it's about uh, the education and counseling that could be effective in the treatment of MOH. And if the fourth is uh, uh, the preventive medication and uh, no medic and non pharmacological treatment uh, are effective in medication overuse headache. Uh, is it the withdrawal from the drugs from symptomatic treatment effective in this pathology and, uh, um, and the symptoms the symptoms that you have during the withdrawal from medication do we have uh, uh, the possibility to uh, treat uh, them uh, with medication the withdrawal uh, for these patients where they are in the world and the last one uh, uh, is about the relapse can we treat the relapse and avoid the relapsing medication overuse headache? So we are going to, uh, to see in details what was the agreement, the consensus about this uh, uh, medication uh, uh, overuse headache. So uh, the first one uh, concerned the information and the advice uh, for the prevention of, of medication uh, um, abuse headache in patients that are at risk of developing this, uh, this stuff. Uh, in principle, we have agreed that uh, MOH is uh, a headache that is preventable. Um, it is known and uh, we have uh, um, experience that the, the increase of awareness in the population and in your patients uh, uh, and in, in the people treating headaches, so nurses, uh, doctors, and so on, it's important uh, and uh, um, may uh, give some aid uh, in, the, in the prevention of medication abuse. So uh, it is important that we develop uh, with media, with leaflet, and so on. Um, that we have experience also in our uh, department that uh, if we use uh, a brochure or education course like the one that we make during the withdrawal when patients are in the hospital. Uh, this is uh, important uh, uh, to prevent. We see less uh, uh, relapse of medication overuse when patients follow this uh, um, the advice and the information that it provides. So this is uh, a consensus in favor of this uh, um, of this item. But of course, uh, it is only at the level of a good clinical practice, uh, but it is something that we should apply in our patients. Uh, uh, we know also that uh, in patients that are at risk of developing a medication overuse headache, uh, uh, it's important to have uh, a follow-up. Follow-up, uh, I personally have one follow-up at two months, and after that, every three or four months, uh, it depends on how frequent uh, 
is the headache and the, how how bad there was the the abuse of medication in, before. Um, but, and of course, uh, this is uh, the final agreement on this uh, question was that these are recommendations that uh, don't have uh, substantial papers and works uh, behind, but uh, it is a consensus of all people that deal with these patients every day in their clinical uh, practice. Uh, then we had to uh, speak about the pharmacological uh, preventive treatment. Is it this uh, effective if we apply the, this uh, pharmacological prevention uh, to avoid uh, uh, the medication overuse headache in our patients? Unfortunately, the evidence uh, are that the preventive medication before uh, a possible uh, uh, MOH uh, is not uh, uh, validated uh, from uh, a robust uh, literature in this respect. Um, so uh, it is a recommendation of an uh, expert of uh, the European, the, uh, European Academy of Neurology to have uh, further um, uh, controlled study in this respect to see if uh, uh, you use a good uh, and a good uh, prevention could uh, uh, avoid uh, the medication overuse headache. Uh, we know that, uh, for example, if we evaluate the topiramate studies, yeah, this is uh, uh, a work evaluating the three uh, clinical trials with topiramate, uh, um, we can see that there is a change in the number of headache. Uh, uh, days uh, from uh, baseline to the period, uh, and that is uh, in the considering the last uh, four weeks uh, uh, evaluation. As we may see in the red uh, square, there is a, um, a significant uh, uh, change uh, in the people using topiramate uh, compared to what is the case in the placebo, even in the, in the total number. There is a significant difference at 3.17 versus 1.72 uh, days uh, um, uh, of headache in the patient. So, uh, probably topiramate uh, is one of the drugs that should be used in this uh, respect. And uh, advice, uh, uh, education, uh, uh, and the education and the advice, it is enough in patients that have already medication overuse headache, this is another problem. Uh, we can use the advice. The advice is important, but uh, this is uh, probably a first uh, approach to our uh, uh, patients uh, in those uh, uh, who use uh, triptans uh, or simple analgesics uh, and in those that they don't have a major psychiatric problem or comorbidity that can affect the the whole disease. The device can be uh, provided by nurses uh, in some countries, there are technicians, uh, general practitioners, sometimes neurologists in private practice because it is something that takes time. But uh, probably the advice alone is not enough in those patients uh, that are more complex. We may say MOH plus uh, patients with overusing opioids, tranquilizer barbiturates, and so on. In this case, uh, you may need to have a headache specialist and uh, other specialists working in team. Uh, there is a contribution showing that uh, uh, probably the advice uh, uh, alone uh, can be of efficacy in the patients with medication overuse headache. This is a contribution for Norway, evaluating 109 uh, cases. Uh, with chronic headache and medication overuse with a long, relative long follow-up of, of one and a half year. And we see here uh, that there is, uh, if we consider the medication days per month, uh, there is uh, a significant different, uh, uh, difference uh, between baseline and follow-up. This is just applying the, the information, providing information to the patients. The same goes uh, if we consider patients in white with medication overuse and patients uh, with a chronic headache. Uh, if we see 
the number of patients after uh, the information provided on medication overuse headache, we see there is a significant change at follow-up uh, in patients with uh, um, medication overuse. They are much reduced the number uh, of patients still having overuse. And then there is another contribution from Italy, uh, sometimes ago in 2006, uh, that there was a comparison between uh, a group of uh, patients uh, um, trying a, a program for medication of use headache, one group with simple advice, compared to a group with the structure, uh, outpatient program, and another group uh, with the structure in a uh, structure inpatient program. So, patients in the world, patients outside, and simple advice. This was a, a follow-up of my say, relatively short, but uh, eight weeks uh, is not that bad. Uh, and we may see that in group A, group B, and group C, the number of reduced uh, uh, headache days per month is not statistically different. And the same, the number of reduction of medication uh, um, days in a month is not statistically different the last two uh, lines. So this means that uh, probably uh, even if we compare um, different approaches uh, in these patients, uh, the result is the same. So we may uh, be allowed to use also the advice alone or the out uh, uh, outpatient uh, protocol. Uh, then is uh, uh, preventive medication <coughs> uh, effective during the medication overuse headache? Uh, we have experience and uh, there is enough uh, uh, consensus uh, showing that the topiramate, uh, Botox uh, and the monoclonal antibody uh, that uh, work on uh, CGRP receptor are effective in patients uh, in chronic, with chronic migraine and medication overuse. But uh, of course, we have to be careful using topiramate uh, in uh, women uh, with potential childbearing. Uh, in clinical practice, uh, 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 anyhow, it's important to provide advice to the patients uh, before uh, starting all this treatment. Uh, and uh, mm, we had to say that unfortunately, the, some other medication like uh, beta blockers that we use uh, uh, so frequently, flunarizine, amitriptyline, uh, uh, may have uh, efficacy, but uh, this has not been shown in a randomized study as it should be. So, the evidence is low, the quality of evidence uh, uh, is moderate for Botox and uh, antibody, low for topiramide, and the recommendation is weak in this respect. These are the two major contributions, uh, preempt one and preempt two, showing the efficacy of uh, Botox uh, in the treatment of uh, clonic migraine. And we see it is, uh, um, it's a randomized, double blind uh, study showing that uh, there is uh, 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 efficacy. Here we see the difference uh, of uh, uh, conversion, as they say, or change from uh, abuse to non-abuse. Uh, and we say the result with the, um, uh, of Botox uh, in violet and placebo in gray. The number of patients uh, uh, is uh, much, uh, much uh, less, uh, um, in, uh, in, uh, much higher uh, changing from one, uh, from abuse to non-abuse in the group of patients with the Botox. And the same here it, when it goes uh, around uh, the 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 the, tip, um, the the type of uh, uh, analgesics or uh, other symptomatic drug, we see that uh, uh, there is a, a relatively change with the use of topiramate versus placebo if medication overuse is due to topi uh, to triptans intake. The same goes here with uh, uh, patients. Uh, uh, using topiramate, there is the change after uh, uh, topiramate. There is no major change, as you may see on the right side of these slides, so while the change in the number of uh, um, days uh, during the last week is much uh, uh, more 3.5, significantly more 3.5 um, using topiramate. If we uh, go to the antibody, 
CGRP antibody, we have the uh, data on Renumab, and here we can see on the left side the group of patients treated with Renumab without medication overuse, and on the right side with medication overuse. On the left side, we may see that there is a change from the number of medication per month uh, from baseline up to three months. And we may see that there is a significant difference in uh, patients uh, uh, using 70 or 140 milligrams. No, no difference uh, between the two dosage, but a significant dis difference versus the placebo. On the right side, uh, we see that, uh, again, Renomab is affecting the, in uh, reducing the medication overuse uh, versus the placebo if we uh, see the data on one, at one, two, and three months of treatment. Uh, the same uh, goes uh, with uh, uh, the other antibody, Fremanezumab, that uh, uh, is able to reduce uh, in patients with the medication overuse. These are data at four weeks and 12 weeks. Um, the difference uh, is more or less the same in the one using quarterly Fremanezumab or monthly Fremanezumab. Then we see that there is a statistically different change from uh, in the number of monthly average migraine days uh, in the group of patients uh, compared to a placebo. So we may uh, say that the monoclonal antibodies are effective medication of reduce a headache. Then uh, there is uh, uh, a withdrawal. Uh, the problem of withdrawal, if it is uh, 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 important, effective in uh, the medication of reduce headache. Um, withdrawal, uh, according to the consensus, uh, is effective in uh, reducing, achieving the overuse and restoring a episodic pattern of headache. So there is a change from chronic to episodic pattern of headache, and uh, this is in a, has been shown in a high percentage of subjects published in the literature. Withdrawal is, uh, is associated also with uh, a reduced uh, health cost uh, for the our national uh, health system and uh, uh, improving an improvement uh, of quality of life if we consider depression and anxiety that are always uh, um, uh, associated with this kind of headache but there are some uncertainty that uh, are still present if uh, uh, when uh, it, this uh, uh, preventive uh, medication should be used, if it has to be early or later during the um, uh, withdrawal from medication. So the evidence is moderate, but the recommendation to withdraw is very strong. Here we have a contribution showing that the complete detoxification is effective. So this is a randomized uh, clinical trial. Uh, showing that uh, uh, if we compare uh, people, uh, patients, uh, uh, with the reduced intake uh, medication, so two days a week was allowed for medication, compared to those uh, that had the complete withdrawal uh, in two months uh, from medication, there is a statistically different uh, difference in, uh, from baseline uh, in the number uh, to, uh, of headache days per month. This is uh, already present at two months, at six months, and at the follow-up at uh, one year. This is a, a nice, uh, uh, interesting contribution about the treatment of the medication of reuse headache. Uh, there is a systematic uh, review. Uh, only probably Chinese people can have the patient uh, to work and work and analyze in all these paper, papers. And uh, here we may see that uh, uh, there are some, uh, uh, there are 68 uh, uh, studies that have been uh, evaluated in details showing how, how is uh, the best uh, way to approach this uh, problem. Uh, here is another contribution comparing people uh, uh, with medication overuse headache, uh, uh, some with the withdrawal and uh, preventive therapy, uh, a group with the preventive therapy, and the group only with withdrawal. Uh, probably if we um, uh, look at the last two lines, uh, 
the best uh, treatment, the most effective treatment is withdrawal from uh, analgesics and symptomatic treatment and uh, addition of preventive treatment uh, in these uh, patients. As we may see here on the left side, there is a, a change in the headache days and we may see that the group uh, in uh, uh, green uh, with this small ball uh, is uh, the one with withdrawal press prevention is the most uh, effective uh, in changing the number of days per month uh, uh, of headache and the same uh, on the right side the change in migraine days uh, in at um, six months uh, it's much better uh, it's more uh, it's um, much better when you use the two approach withdraw from medication plus preventive treatment so it is something that should be done uh, if we use the discontinuation uh, we have here we have uh, the 68 uh, uh, studies uh, uh, from the chinese group and we see that there is uh, um, an important uh, number of people that are still detoxified according to the follow-up Detoxification is present from 50, 60, up to 70 and 80 percent of the cases. And on the right and left side, you may see the follow-up months. So we have follow-up up to uh, two years uh, and four years. And still there is a high number of patients that are detoxified. Then we come to the question that if the symptom can be treated during the, medi during the medication, um, we draw when the patient is in the world uh, and uh, we have several types of symptomatic med medication that we have been speaking mm -hmm. yesterday as it compared to naproxen, uh, corticosteroids uh, and some other drugs that can be used uh, uh, to prevent uh, uh, the pain and some other drugs like uh, metoclopamide or other drugs uh, that can be used to prevent uh, other symptoms, uh, the autonomic symptoms and signs can be present during this uh, uh, phase. Unfortunately, the quality of evidence is low, but and the recommendation is weak. There are no uh, consistent uh, paper, uh, randomized paper showing that. And then we come to the relapse. That is the last uh, uh, PICO uh, question. Can the relapse, uh, relapse uh, from uh, of uh, MOH be uh, prevented? So the possibility that the patients today uh, um, uh, go back to the um, episodic migraine and they stay there. Um, we have to consider the, identi the identification of risk factors that are psychological problems, smokes, uh, uh, high, um, blood, uh, um, high blood pressure, and so on. So it is important to follow up uh, also the patients with the headache diary that we use. We use the digital headache diary now, the head up application that is very easy. Um, it's important to um, have the patients under psychotherapy, psychodynamic or uh, psychotherapy or mindfulness based, uh, based training and uh, um, the use of uh, probably of Botox can be effective after the withdrawal from uh, medication uh, to prevent uh, a relapse uh, of uh, um, a relapse into again a form of medication overuse headache. Um, uh, unfortunately, up to now, the evidence of the procedure to avoid the relapse are not sufficiently validated. Uh, but uh, we may say that after a proper uh, uh, withdrawal from medication, uh, the possibility of, of using uh, short-term psychotherapy, Botox uh, and uh, other drugs like uh, uh, the new antibody uh, may prevent the patients uh, to uh, get again into the um, situation of medication overuse uh, headache. So this is again a good clinical practice uh, approach to the patients. So if you will consider the relapse rate again from those uh, 78 studies, uh, that we see that the relapse uh, uh, can vary. There are some contributions starting from 10 or sometimes to zero, no relapse at all. And some patients that can relapse, can relapse in a percentage of 35, 40% of the cases. I must say that uh, the highest relapse is during the first year, 
and if the patients uh, adjust their lifestyle and the different life, uh, uh, the number the number of relapses is much less uh, less after one year from the um, the, the other one. So, in conclusion. Uh, patient education can be important in the management of medication overuse headache. Um, and the patients that are not complicated, the, the simple MOH can be treated even in general practice if the doctor has received a good training. And um, the patients with the complex or MOH plus, as we call it, should be managed by a multidisciplinary team, including a specialist in neurologist and a psychologist, a specialist in pain, and so on. Uh, in patients in whom the education is not effective, uh, uh, it's important. Uh, the problem uh, um, is that uh, probably they've been using uh, some other um, uh, drugs like opiates uh, and so on. So in these patients, we should use uh, a, a proven, uh, a proven uh, efficacy with treatment into the, the world. And again, uh, um, some patients respond to preventive treatment, uh, and this should be done uh, uh, in some cases before the starting of medication or use the withdrawal. Um, and uh, the intake uh, of uh, medication should be terminated abruptly in patients uh, with medication overuse data like simple, analgesics, ergos and triptan, or uh, in patients with uh, um, uh, MOH plus, uh, we should have uh, a slow tapering for those having uh, barbiturates, opioids, or tranquilizers. And uh, finally, the withdrawal can be performed in some cases where, where it's not available other possibility on an outpatient basis, but in some cases, the most complicated, we should have an inpatient setting to uh, use and work in this respect. The headache history is much important uh, to start at the very beginning to decide which approach should be selected for our patients. Thank you for your patience and attention. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Antonacci, for your perfect and very interesting lecture. Thank you very much. There are no questions. Уважаеми колеги, уважаеми академик Миланов, Мисля, че можем да пристъпваме към следващата лекция предизвикателства в лечението на МС при осложнена епидемична обстановка. Академик Миланов, чува да, Благодаря, благодаря професор Танасова. Да, много хубава лекция беше тази, която току-що мина. Аз с удоволствие и слушах. А, така или иначе, сега прехвърляме темата малко, малко в едно друго заболяване. А, това е множествената склероза. А, множествената склероза е безспорно важно заболяване и а, особено в а, контекста на COVID-епидемията а, тя става още по-важна, защото, а, както ще видите, а, малко накратко бих искал да кажа нещо за патогенезата на множествената склероза и както и за коронавируса. А, сега, може би за коронавируса всички знаем достатъчно от а, публикациите, ако не другаде, поне в а, Фейсбук, а, но така или не, че да си припомним, че инфектира клетките чрез ангиотензин, кон- конвертиращи езим, рецепторите тип 2, потиска естествените органи на а, организма, като продуцира интерферон, потиска интерферон стимулираната генна експресия, предизвиква лимфопиния с лоша прогноза. А, и сега точно тук става проблема, защото модифи... някои от модифициращите лечения за множествена склероза намаляват броя на лимфоцитите или на техните субпопулации. А, така или иначе, ли лечението на пациента не можем да го спреме, защото Пациента по време на тази епидемия, която може да продължи няколко години, ще получава пристъпи, заболяването му ще се влушава, ние трябва да мислиме 
какви медикаменти да прилагаме за модифициране на хода на заболяването, ще се натрупват нови симптоми, които ни трябва да лекуваме. И всичко това ни трябва да го съобразим от една страна с патогенезата на вирусната инвазия, от друга страна с патогенезата на множествената склероза. Сега знаем, че при наличие на антигени, те се поглъщат от така наречените антиген представящи клетки, като такива действат микроглиалните клетки и макрофагите. Антиген представящите клетки представят част от 